Hello once again AP Calculus AB students. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the solution to problem 15 part A only um, in section 2.6 of the ninth edition of Larson. Um, this problem has always given students some trouble uh, in the past, uh, but I want you all to realize that any kind of difficulty that you might have with part A does not really have a, a bearing on whether or not you can answer parts B and C, which get into the more um, oh, related rate kind of idea. Um, part A is really uh, nothing more than a, a geometry slash trigonometry question where you relate uh, uh, two different versions of the area of a triangle. So let's just jump right into it. We've got an isosceles triangle. And they tell us that the two sides are called S, and the included angle is theta. And our job is to show that the area of this isosceles triangle is one-half times the side squared times the sine of the included angle. Well, if you're thinking, uh, that doesn't look anything like the area formula that I've been taught dealing with the triangle, then you're in good company. It is a very rare uh, formula for the area. We don't use it uh, very often uh, in, in geometry or trigonometry, but it does work, and that is the purpose of this problem, is to prove to you um, how it comes about. So what I want you to realize is that if, if you have this particular formula as your destination, we need a starting place. And what better place to start than your normal interpretation of what the area of a triangle is? And you're probably all thinking area is equal to, for a triangle, one half times the base times the height. That's a great place to start. Now I realize that this picture that I've drawn to the right doesn't have any mention of a base or a height. But that's fine. You can go ahead and label the picture with those quantities. You know where the base is. The base would just simply be this portion of the picture. And to get the height, we would just simply drop down an altitude. We can call that h. And there we have it. So the job is to basically bridge the gap between our formula here to the left to our formula to the right. And it's no secret that our destination formula has some trigonometry involved. So we probably need to invoke our own trigonometric ratios for the shape. Now, to make our job a little easier, you'll notice that we do have a right triangle here. And I'm going to highlight that here in green so that it stands out just a little bit. Consider that right triangle. And while we do that, we also have to be very aware of the fact that this particular altitude that we've drawn in does indeed bisect that angle theta. So, yep, that's just an old uh, geometry uh, theorem that, that uh, we may have forgotten since it's been quite a few years since we've taken geometry, I understand. But not only is that angle bisected, but in an isosceles triangle, as you can probably imagine, the base is also cut in half as well. So what does that allow us to do? Well, we can state some facts. We can state a fact about this particular triangle that involves a trig ratio, preferably sine. Well, it's pretty clear that the sine of that angle, theta over 2, would be equivalent to the opposite side measure, b over 2, divided by the hypotenuse s. And if we go ahead and simplify a little further here, we could say that the sine of theta over 2 would be b divided by 2s. All right, hopefully you see that I just called this s over 1 and then multiplied by the reciprocal 1 over s that places the 2 and the s alongside each other in the denominator. Now, if you look back at our original formula here, ah, we have this b here that really uh, we would like to get out of the, the equation, and if at all possible, maybe relate it uh, in terms of a theta, yep, and a sine that both happen to be present in that formula, and that's easily accomplished by cross-multiplying. So b would be equivalent to the sine of theta over 2 all multiplied by 2 times s. 
So let's take the results of fact number one and rewrite our area equation, or at least part of it, by replacing b with the sine of theta over 2 times 2 times s. Now, I know that that doesn't look exactly like our destination right here, but we are getting close. Now, we still have this h, and I probably should remember to drop that down, which would be very easy to forget. So this h just parks down alongside the rest of our area expression. And I think it's pretty clear that we want that h out of there as well. So is there some other kind of relationship with this green triangle that will involve h, preferably in terms of the theta and the s? So that would take us to fact number two. Fact number two about this green triangle says that the cosine of theta divided by 2 is equal to h over s, which means if we were to cross multiply, h is the cosine of theta over 2 times s. So we're going to go ahead and make yet another substitution. Let's go ahead and... Um, it's okay with you. I'm going to cancel this one half and this two out right now. So I've got um, s times the sine of theta over two, and then my h is going to be another s times, and now the cosine of theta over two. And we take a look and think, okay, do we match what's highlighted in yellow here? Well, gosh, not quite. Um, at least we can see the s squared, hopefully, coming out of this guy and this guy. But, yeah, what's going on with the sine times cosine? In fact, we don't see a cosine whatsoever in that yellow highlighted formula, and I understand that. So what that's going to mean, <laughs> well, we're going to use fact number three. And this might be the toughest fact for us to, to grasp because it really involves... Uh, whether or not we remember some of our trigonometric identities. And uh, sometimes that's a little, uh, that's a tough proposition, I understand. But uh, if you think about, okay, is there some kind of a relationship between a, a sine of an angle and the sine of half of that angle times the cosine of half that angle? And the identity of which I speak is called the double angle identity for sine. The sine of 2 theta is equivalent to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Now you can easily look that up in, in any kind of trigonometry book, um, but it is a, a very, uh, it's one of the more popular identities, I'd have to say, outside of the Pythagorean identities. Now we still have a little bit of work here to do because... Um, we don't quite have this set up exactly the way that we, we want it to be. Let me get rid of that uh, little mark above the two there. So if we were to think about, well, let's take this sine theta, cosine theta, and, 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 and hope to solve for it. Well, that can easily be accomplished by dividing this two over to the right side. And I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm going to just kind of float this over here to the left, and I'll keep the same color. And it's true that this fact then states that the sine of 2 theta cut in half is equivalent to the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Now this is really the critical stage because we're there. We have pretty much what we need. The problem is we notice that in our area equation where we last left off, we have sine of theta over 2, cosine of theta over 2. So close, so close to what we've got here. The only difference is in our formula up above here, we've got the angles cut in half. Hmm, could we cut these angles in half in this version of the formula? We certainly could, as long as you do the same thing to this angle on the left side. So keeping that in mind then, 
I'm going to go ahead and multiply the two underlying S's together. This one half will just drop right straight down. And then instead of using the sine of 2 theta, we're just going to use the sine of 2 theta cut in half. The sine of 2 theta cut in half will allow for these two angles here to be cut in half. 2 theta divided by 2 is simply theta. And if you look, what we've got underlined right here matches exactly what we have highlighted over in here. And like I said, I think the critical portion of this particular proof is your familiarity and your comfort with the sine of 2 theta, the double angle identity for sine, and then how to manipulate it just a little bit to change those angle measures from thetas to theta over 2s. So hopefully this helps and you got a little bit better understanding maybe how, to, how parts B and C uh, could be worked out using this particular formula.